Welcome back to Lipid Biosynthesis on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous two videos, we looked at, first of all, how we make cytosolic acetyl-CoA. Then we saw in the next video what we actually do to that acetyl-CoA. We actually carboxylate it using this enzyme acetyl-CoA carboxylase to generate malonyl-CoA. And then I mentioned that a multifunctional enzyme complex called fatty acid synthase is going to take malonyl coas and ultimately make fatty acids up through palmitate um, with the malonyl coa. Now we're actually going to look at the function of fatty acid synthase and we're actually going to see the entirety of its function and it can be a little bit complicated so make sure to pay close attention to each step. So first of all, Fatty acid synthase, as we've already mentioned, it's a multifunctional cytoplasmic enzyme. So fatty acid synthesis, and really, for the most part, all of lipid synthesis, occurs outside the mitochondria. We usually say it's cytosolic. There are a lot of steps that occur in the smooth ER, along the smooth ER membrane. But just in general, that's it's outside the mitochondria, which makes sense because the catabolism of fatty acids occurs in the mitochondria. So we want to have those two processes separate in space. And the important thing about fatty acid synthesis, other than a few um, extraneous steps that we'll talk about, the major extension of the fatty acid chain is the exact reverse of beta oxidation. If you remember the steps of beta oxidation, um, what you'd remember is we're actually breaking a fatty acid down. So the steps were we have double bond formation, we have hydration of that double bond, we have oxidation of the resulting hydroxyl group, and then thiolysis with a coenzyme A, which removed two carbons. What we're going to find is that actually it's going to be the exact reverse. Rather than end with a thiolysis, we're actually going to begin with a condensation. We're going to have a reduction next, a dehydration, and then another reduction of the double bond. Before we actually start going into the four major steps of fatty acid synthase, uh, which are the reverse of beta oxidation, we need to talk about two things. First of all, we need to utilize the malonyl group from the malonyl CoA that we just generated in the previous video by acetyl CoA carboxylase. It turns out that, first of all, this malonyl group, this three carbon fragment of malonyl CoA, is going to be attached to the thiol, the sulfur, of this brown protein referred to as acyl carrier protein. Acyl carrier protein is going to function in a very similar way to the biotin carrier protein uh, that was part of acetyl CoA carboxylase. It's going to be kind of like an arm that swings uh, the, the thing that it's carrying between the various subunits and functionalities of fatty acid synthase. So that's what this acyl carrier protein is going to do. It's going to kind of swing around um, the growing fatty acid chain. But initially, we're going to have to attach a malonyl CoA group to it, or at least the malonyl part. The second thing is there's another thiol group that's actually on uh, this part of the enzyme, beta ketoacyl ACP synthase. Um, we're just going to call it KS, that's what it's abbreviated as. But we have to actually attach the acetyl group um, from an acetyl CoA onto that sulfur. Now, this is the only acetyl CoA that we're going to utilize directly in this pathway in this process. It's only the initial two carbons right here from acetyl-CoA. The rest of them are not going to come from that, but those are the two things we have to attach. Now, I'm going to show you another view of this, which may be a little bit confusing, but don't pay attention to any of this stuff down here. Just pay attention to this up here at the top, because for the remainder of it, I'm going to go back to this uh, very easily uh, visualizable figure. So these are all the subunits of, of fatty acid synthase. Here we see the acyl carrier protein. This is eventually going to have the malonyl CoA attached to it, as we'll see in a minute. Um, and then we also have this KS, that's our ketoacyl ACP synthase. That's going to have the acetyl group from acetyl CoA on it. So like I said, those two things have to happen first before we ever begin growing a fatty acid chain. So first of all, this beta keto acyl ACP synthase or KS has to receive that acetyl group and basically that's what's shown here so we attach the acetyl part to that thiol of KS okay that's attached now the second thing is we have to attach the malonyl group 
um, from malonyl CoA onto the acyl carrier protein. And that's what you see in this step going down right here. The malonyl group, so the carboxyl group, and these two carbons in pink get attached to the sulfur or thiol of the acyl carrier protein. Okay, so once those two things happen, um, then we're going to actually go through the, the, the process of fatty acid synthesis. All right, so let's go back to this, and this is much more easily visualizable. So the first step that's going to happen is condensation. Now, this carboxyl on, malonyl, on the malonyl group is important to have added in the previous step in acetyl-CoA carboxylase. And that's because this carboxyl group can be easily decarboxylated, and it results in a nucleophile. So in the first condensation, this is the first step, we have decarboxylation of the malonyl group and this resulting, the resulting electrons, this bond right here, attacks this carbon of acetyl, of the acetyl group, and it essentially transfers these two carbons in yellow right here from the acetyl onto this carbon in pink from the malonyl group. So look at that. So we have our acyl carrier protein, here's the two carbons in pink, and notice that this carbon in pink where my mouse is gets attached to this carbonyl carbon in yellow. And now, instead of having these two carbons from malonyl CoA, now we have four carbons. We have two from the malonyl group and two from the acetyl group. Okay. That's the condensation reaction. I'm going to actually have another video separate from this after this where we're actually going to look at the mechanism of this condensation. And you may be able to see it here if you're decent with organic chemistry, but we'll have a separate video where we'll go into more detail on that and hopefully get a grasp of what's happening. This is the most complicated step right here to conceptually understand, but just understand that the acetyl-CoA that we attached here, or the acetyl group, that is the only acetyl-CoA we directly utilize. Every other acetyl-CoA has to be converted to malonyl-CoA, and then the malonyl-CoAs are attached here. All right. Remember that the growing fatty acid chain, which now is four carbons, is going to be grown on top of or attached to this acyl carrier protein. And this acyl carrier protein is essentially going to swing the growing fatty acid chain around the various subunits with different functionalities, and they're going to do their various reactions. So we just condensed it with loss of CO2, have a four carbon fragment. Now we're gonna reduce this beta carbonyl, okay? Um, in some ways you could call this process beta reduction because instead of doing beta oxidation, we're doing the reverse. It could be called beta reduction. So this carbonyl is gonna be reduced to an alcohol as you see right here. The electrons to perform this reduction are from NADPH. So if you remember two videos ago, I mentioned the two major things we need for fatty acid synthesis are acetyl-CoA, which we've already shown how it's used, and then NADPH either from malic enzyme or the hexose monophosphate shunt. This is why we need NADPH, or at least this is half of the reason. So we'll look at the other half in just a couple steps, but we reduce this carbonyl to an OH. The third step is dehydration. Um, we're actually going to form the double bond, so it's going to perform an elimination of this OH group. We're essentially going to have a double bond that forms between this uh, alpha carbon and this beta carbon. And notice that it is a trans double bond. Okay, so remember in beta oxidation, when we formed that double bond, it was also trans. Um, this is, again, the exact reverse, so we have a trans double bond. And then we're going to reduce that double bond using electrons again from NADPH. So that double bond becomes just a straight alkane, a single bond. Again, like I said, the electrons come from NADPH. So what you can see is in order to grow the chain by two carbons, we have to utilize two molecules of NADPH. Okay, That's why the NADH is going to become so important because we're not going to do this cycle once. We're going to do it multiple times because in order to add two more carbons, we're going to have to do it all over again. But there's a couple intermediate steps that we have to go through here um, in order to do the next condensation. So notice here we have this four carbon chain attached to the acyl carrier protein in brown. All right. So we've got to do a couple of things. One, we actually have to transfer this four carbon fragment actually from this sulfur, from the acyl carrier protein, down to this one down here in my mouse. Remember, that was the thiol of KS. Okay, so what this enzyme is going to do, beta keto acyl ACP synthase, it's going to transfer this growing fatty acid chain, now four carbons, to this sulfur. 
Okay, so notice in the end product right here, I now have the four carbon fragment. I've blown it up in size a little bit, but it's now attached to this sulfur. And remember, this sulfur is part of KS, beta keto acyl ACP synthase. We also have to do a reaction of this enzyme, malonyl ACP transferase. Okay, this is the enzyme that's actually going to charge the ACP, the acyl carrier protein, with malonyl CoA. We actually saw it before when we actually attached this malonyl CoA the first time, that was done through the enzyme MAT, which is, again, malonyl ACP transferase. And that's going to put another fresh malonyl group on the ACL carrier protein. All right. Now, this next step that I'm showing, this is just the condensation that we saw in step one. But essentially what's going to happen now is, again, you're going to decarboxylate here, this carbon is then going to, right here where my mouse says, this carbon is going to attack this carbon right here. And essentially what's going to happen is this entire four carbon fragment is going to be, it's essentially just going to replace this carboxyl. It's these four carbons are going to move up here and you get this right here. So I have these two carbons. These are from the malonyl CoA. And then the, these, this whole group over here, this whole thing, right? These four carbons are from this. And so now I've done a second condensation and now I have a six carbon fragment. From here, I'm just going to reduce, dehydrate, reduce again. And then I'm just gonna keep repeating this process right here. So there's a couple things you should notice. First of all, every single step that we have, every cycle, I should say, every cycle, we're gonna to have to charge the ACP, the ACL carrier protein with a fresh malonyl CoA, okay? Once we do that, and assuming that the growing fatty acid chain has been transferred to the KS, the ketoacyl ACP synthase down here, then we can condense, reduce, dehydrate, and reduce, and then we kind of have to just flip them back. So we have to move this growing fatty acid chain from the ACL carrier protein back to KS down here. Then we recharge the ACL carrier protein with malonyl CoA, and then we condense, reduce, dehydrate, reduce. Then we switch the fatty acid chain back to KS, charge the ACL carrier protein with another, another malonyl CoA, and then condense, reduce, dehydrate, reduce. Okay, so it's just gonna repeat that process over and over again. But the third thing again that you should notice and remember, the initial acetyl group, this recall is where the fatty acid chain is gonna be transferred. So we only have one acetyl CoA that's directly used. Everything else is gonna be the malonyl CoA and then the growing fatty acid chain. So only one acetyl CoA is directly used. All right, so hopefully this process made sense. And there's a couple other things I wanna mention about this. First of all, uh, this process of the chain lengthening, as you would call it, only generates saturated fatty acids. Unsaturated fatty acids where we introduce a double bond occurs much later and in a different uh, process which we will cover later. The other thing that's also important, and I mentioned this in the previous video, uh, is that this fatty acid synthase, this form of the enzyme complex, can only generate fatty acids up to 16 carbons in length. A 16 carbon fatty acid would be palmitate. So if you need to generate longer fatty acids, such as stearate, which is 18 carbons, arachidate, 20 carbons, and so on and so forth, you actually don't use fatty acid synthase. What you actually have to do is once you generate the 16 carbon uh, fatty acid, it has to be removed, so completely hydrolyzed from fatty acid synthase, uh, reconnected to coenzyme A, uh, through cytosolic fatty acyl CoA synthetase, and then it will be picked up by a similar enzyme called elongase, or they're also called fatty acid elongation systems, usually just shortened to elongase. And they function in a very similar manner to fatty acid synthase, same mechanism, except they don't use an acyl carrier protein. They actually use acetyl CoA, or they use coenzyme A. And we'll actually talk about that in the next video and see what happens when you need to make a fatty acid longer than 16 carbons. All right, so hopefully this video made a little bit of sense. Again, watch for a video where I'm actually gonna show you the mechanism of this condensation, and I'll show you it in two ways. I'll show you it both with malonyl CoA and the initial acetyl group, and then I'll show you it maybe with malonyl CoA and um, a 14 carbon fragment to generate palmitate. And we'll look at both those mechanisms, and hopefully that will start to make some sense to you. 
Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.